punch it. Oh. Welcome back. Kathy Rain, once again, we are here in the 90s. Uh, today, I, what did I look up? It was like called a, a sun shower or something. And it sounded kind of good. Cocktail. Um, but I didn't have everything for it, so I kind of winged it. And I sort of don't remember what I did. It's got orange juice, lemon juice, orange bitters, gin, uh, a little bit of mead. It was like a raspberry mead, I think. A little bit, a couple drops of orange blossom water. And I think that's it. Oh, a little bit of vermouth too. Um, yeah, <laughs> it tastes. It tastes good. It tastes like, like orange wine or something. Yeah, it's good. It's delicious. Um, yeah, really scraping the bottom of the barrel here with the rain cocktails. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to figure out uh, something else to do with that. I don't know. Anyway, Kathy Rain time. Okay. Um, last time we super duper made progress and it was very satisfying. So we have this picture that looks like the, the church brochure. Um, we've got this, the plant, interesting plant. Um, Let's talk to Eileen. Hey, E, got a sec? Sure thing, Kathy. What's up? What's your opinion on the Church of the Holy Trinity? They seem like an okay bunch to me. Just your regular old Christians. My kind of crowd. That's just it. They seem a bit too normal. And there's that logo, too. It could just be a coincidence, Kathy. The Holy Trinity is typically portrayed as a triangle. I don't believe in coincidences, E. I believe in action and reaction. Gee, you sound like a starship captain. Captain Rain of the USS Dignity, here to save the galaxy. Oh, please kill me now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I don't really need to talk to I her. I should get back else. to the investigation. Okie dokie. So, let's see. I guess... I guess let's go. See where, where we can go. I think we can go All to right, that place that Peace out, e. uh, Charles Wade is. Okie dokie. Right? Good luck and see you later. We can probably check out the church. Ask people, uh, ask people about things. Click on things. Yeah, new locations. Ooh. So we can go to nature reserve, we can go to the church, and we can go to the clinic. Uh, which we do first? I think clinic, because we've been trying to talk to, to Charles Wade for a long time. <laughs> cool music out here. So let's see. Let's talk to the bum. It's that homeless guy who helped me distract Lenny. He's always so chipper and happy. <laughs> we meet again, Mr. Homeless Guy. Homeless? It's the worst thing I ever heard of and totally untrue. So, what's up with the trash can? Digging for treasure? Well, uh, I'm just going through a rough patch. By the way, you owe me ten bucks. Nah, you agreed to seven. You're busting my balls here. <laughs> Better get those balls checked out in this clinic then. Kathy's a ball buster. So cool. For sure. Like a stake through the heart. Hmm. What do they call you anyway? Gober. Everyone calls me Gober. Gober. Alright. I'm Kathy. Pleasure to meet you. You do look like a goober. <laughs> uh consult notes. So, what's your story, anyway? My story? Yeah. Don't all bums have a story? For your information, this is all just a dry streak in my showbiz career. Is that so? I don't recognize you at all. 
I used to have more hair. That, I actually believe. Come on, man. Frankie Gold is my stage name. Surely you must have heard of me. Frankie Gold? Not really, no. What a oh, Google. come on. I have starred in dozens of Hollywood movies. The Silence of the Lambert? Jacob's Bladder? Jacob's Bladder. The Usual Surprises? Natural Bald Killers? Not ringing any bells. Kids these days, no appreciation for quality cinema. Breaks my heart. So, tell me about this acting career of yours. What about it? <laughs> I want to know about Jacob's Bladder. I'm not bladder. sure I want to know what Jacob's Bladder is about, but I'm going to ask anyway. Jacob's Bladder. The tragic story of Jacob Cobb, a schizophrenic man who forms an imaginary romantic relationship with his bladder. During long and joyful monologues on the can, he starts referring to his nether regions by the name of Jenny. Sadly, before Jacob has a chance to elope with his sweetheart, he gets committed to an asylum due to increasingly erratic behavior. After a big fight with his paramour, Jacob refuses to pee for a week, and he dies from a ruptured bladder. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Tell me about the silence of Lambert. Lawrence Lambert, a real estate agent, suddenly turns mute overnight. For weeks, he tries to communicate with customers using a self-invented sign language, only to realize that true love needs no communication at all. He marries his housekeeper, who only knows two words in English, yes and clean. In the end, Lawrence dies of a heart attack in the arms of his lovely wife, Consuelo Lambert Vasquez. Based on a true story. Wow, sounds riveting. Give me the rundown on the usual surprises. A lighthearted comedy taking place during a surprise birthday party of a 34-year-old Sid McBacon. The story is told from eight different perspectives to keep the audience guessing who the protagonist actually is. The movie ends with the biggest surprise of them all. Sid suddenly dies of an epileptic seizure. I guess it's more of a dark comedy. <laughs> Natural bald killers? It's a dystopian vision of the future where people are valued by the quality of their hair. The protagonist, Eddie Zephy, turns bald in high school. One day, he has simply had enough of all the teasing and the bullying, and he completely snaps and heads out on a scalping spree in search of the perfect head of hair. Eddie makes his way to Mexico for an illegal hair transplant. However, he has an adverse reaction to the anesthesia, and he dies on the operating table. Why do you always die at the end of your movies? Typecasting. Typecasting? <laughs> oh, never mind. Not the cultured type. I understand. I need to ask you a few questions. Sounds serious. Ask away. What's your opinion on the Church of the Holy Trinity? I'd say they're good people. Isaac the priest is, anyway. His dad, Father Bill, on the other hand, though, he and the people he had around him were into some weird shit. What kind of weird shit? I don't know. Uh, they were like a cult or something, with Billy Praise himself at the top. Really shifty bunch of folks. Isaac turned it all around when his dad kicked the bucket, made it a proper church. Interesting. Do you know anyone else who was involved in the old church? Not really. I tried to stay as far away from those people as possible. Ask Isaac about it. He's a friendly guy. All right. I might do that. Okay. Do you know who Charles Wade is? Sure, he's been holed up in this clinic for the last couple of weeks. You saw Charles Wade go in there? Well, yeah. I just told you, man. How did he look? Okay, I guess. Still walking, at least. Doubt he'd know about okay, anything else. Okay, that's enough serious questions for now. Alrighty. Okay, I'm off. Bye. It's in the trash can. Yep, it's full of trash. Figure that. Can we sift through it? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Let's go on in. Hmm. We're gonna have to deal with her. I reckon. 
Yeah, if we want to get upstairs. Okay. Um... No thanks. Women's magazines make my brain melt. Files. Rows and columns of files. Probably easier to use the computer if I need to do some digging. Okay. I can't read it from here. A calendar from 1991. Hmm, guess they really liked that year. <laughs> A computer. They likely keep records of their patients on it. I bet they do. Okay, I'm gonna have to deal with her. She looks bored out of her mind. Pretty understandable, to be honest. Excuse me, nurse? Hey, nurse! Yeah? They don't pay you much, huh? No shit. What do you want? I'm here to see Charles Wade. Never heard of him. Anything else? Bullshit. I know he's here. Listen, it's okay. I'm a friend of the family. No, you're not, and I said he's not here. Don't make me call security. What a bitch. Okay. I need to get rid of her somehow. Uncomfortable, hard plastic chairs. It's like they're intentionally trying to keep people out. I was expecting plastic, but this looks like a real plant. Smoking allowed. I guess this place is a bit behind on healthcare regulations. Guess I can't just go upstairs. No point. I wouldn't even know what room to go to. Okay. Um. Uh, burn the place down. No. Hmm. I wonder if I can use the guy for a uh, goober for a distraction again. Seems to be good for that. Also, is there anything over here? Exit. Hey, doofus. Oh, hey! Mm. <laughs> Live so, performance. How good an actor are you? The best! The very best! You know, that nurse in there, she said she loved you in all those movies, and that she always wished you'd give her a live performance. I knew it! She always gave me these strange looks. I thought it was contempt, but her face must just be cramping up from shyness. Cramping up from shyness? Yeah, that's definitely it. She'd love to see you act. I'm sure. I'm gonna have to oblige. Which movie do you think she'd like the best? Uh, uh... Well, I mean, if he just goes in there and pees on the floor... That'd be a Definitely pretty good distraction, Jacob's right? Ladder. <laughs> I'm feeling the pressure. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. This poor nurse. Oh, Jenny, everything is forgiven. You and me were like peas and carrots. So how do I? I'm just so full of your love that I think I'm about to burst. Jenny, where did you go? Oh, I don't feel so good. Thank you, thank you. You better be sure audience. she would have. Okay. So, it's more complicated than that. That wasn't really an electrifying performance. I'll have to intervene somehow. Intervene I was expecting somehow. class. Oh, stun gun him? Really? She said electrifying performance. I mean, okay. Kathy. <laughs> hey, doofus. Oh, hi. Hey, how about another show? Sure. Any suggestions? Definitely I mean, yeah. Jacob's bladder. I'm feeling the pressure. That's... <laughs> hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> I feel bad. Oh, Jenny. Is this really what I'm forgetting. supposed to do? You and me were like peas and carrots. Good idea, but it wouldn't match. I'm just so symptoms. full of your love that really? I think I'm about to burst. Good idea, but Jenny. it wouldn't match his Where did you go? symptoms. Oh, I don't feel so good. Symptoms. Thank you, thank you. You've been a great audience. What? Uh wouldn't match his symptoms? What? That really stumped me. I don't know. Is it am I supposed to use a different Performance? I don't remember the other ones. They weren't nearly as memorable as Jacob's Bladder. Hey, doofus. Oh, hi! Hey, how about another show? Sure. Any suggestions? This one was about the bald guy. <sighs> I mean, I How about the usual surprises? Business as usual. He's been nothing but helpful to you. Man, I feel like a total jackass. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to make it up to the poor guy later. Give him another three dollars. Uh, okay, let's go read the notice board. Because there's probably a key to her password. Employee of the month, Carlita Mendez. <sighs> what a joke. It's that obnoxious nurse. Carlita Mendez. A calendar from 19 1991. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Siemens. Nineteen ninety one. No. Incorrect password. Um uh, I don't know. Is there anything Rows else I can and look columns at? of files? Probably easier to use the computer if I need to do some digging. Notice is there anything else Employee on the Employee of the month, Carlita Mendez. What a joke. It's that obnoxious nurse. No thanks. Women's magazines make my brain melt. She's listening to music. Uh, I don't know. Music? No. Uh, and boy. Conwell Springs. Um, fuck, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. How am I supposed to figure this out? I mean, Carlita? No. Nurse. No. Conwell Springs. Clinic. Ugh, how am I supposed to figure this out? A calendar from 1991. Hmm, guess they really liked that year. I don't think there's anything else in here that'll give me a clue. Employee of the month, Carlita Mendez. Ugh, what a joke. It's that obnoxious nurse. There's nothing else on the notice board? Employee... There's nothing else on the desk. Magazines. No thanks. Women's magazines make my... Ashtray. Smoking allowed. Guess this place is a bit behind on healthcare regulations. Well, fuck. Uncomfortable, hard plastic chairs. It's like they're intentionally trying to keep people out. Guys, help, Rows I don't know. columns of files. Probably easier to use the computer if I need to do some digging. A 
computer. They likely keep records of their patients on it. I mean, fuck, I don't know. Can I use the boot disk? Or that's the... That's the, like, one that fucks everything up, right? Gador. Otorgador. Otorgador. Yay! Uh, Wade. Charles. Charles Wade. Referral from A. Friedman, St. Francis Medical Center, KC. Okay, a uh, patient has undergone successful invasive heart surgery and was transferred to this facility at his own request. The initial prognosis looks good and the patient is likely to make a full recovery in six to eight weeks. Status stable, room 6B. Okay. Now I know where to go. It's all right, Claude. Understood, sir. So, you managed to find me. I did. Well, let's get this over with then. How do you want your pictures? Shall I get some tubes to fill my face with? Will that suffice for your front page? I'm no journalist. Well, not yet anyway. Ah, she's but a cub. So, you're hoping for your big break. Surely this must be worth an internship at one of the big papers. Do you want me to call Thompson at the Times and get it over with? I still play golf with him every once in a while. Uh, that's not what this is about. That's not what this is about. It's personal. Sounds serious. Perhaps I should ask Claude to produce his gun. You know, Charles, the person most likely to be harmed by a gun tends to be its owner. Very true. That's something the Japs who captured me learned the hard way. Whoa. Did my grandfather bail you out then too, or was that one of the few times where he didn't save your sorry ass? Hold on there. Explain yourself. You're willing to listen to something other than your own voice? I'm stunned. <laughs> <sighs> so sassy. I'm Kathy Rain. Joseph was my grandfather. You were at the funeral. I was. You were late. I needed my morning smoke. Besides, it's not like Grandpa was going anywhere. <laughs> oh, just look at her, Claude. She's absolutely fearless. That's Joseph's blood running through her veins. She certainly has a smart mouth, sir. <laughs> I must say, you have me intrigued, Kathy. What can this old man help you with? Okay, so now we can ask him. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather in 81? I wish I did, Kathy. You must know I did everything in my power to help. How do you think Mary Elizabeth could afford all that expensive treatment? MRIs, neurologists, say what you will about Joseph. But he was never rich. Strange. Grandma never mentioned that to me. She's just too proud. At first she refused. She was convinced that I had an agenda, that there were strings attached. And were there? Don't be silly. Despite all that had happened, I still loved Joseph dearly. I wanted to help. People from places like this have a deeply rooted mistrust in the rich, passed on for generations. In her eyes, I had become one of them. So that's all you know about the whole affair? 
Are you implying that there's more to know? I left the diagnosis to the professionals. Mrs. Rain accepted the healthcare, but asked me to stay out of everything else. So I did. <laughs> I see. What can you tell me about your friendship with Grandpa? Joseph was the best friend I ever had. We grew up together, married our high school sweethearts together, went to war together. I can't even begin to count the number of times he's saved my life. I repaid the favor once or twice, but he came up ahead, no doubt. So when did you two lose touch? I heard that something happened between you and him. What was it? <sighs> the truth is, Brian Rain happened. Sharon Evans happened. My parents? Yes. They ruined everything with their vile, destructive behavior. I couldn't have that around my daughter or my newborn grandson. Joseph was naive. He believed that anyone could be helped, that anyone could be reasoned with, given a chance. He was just too good, bless him. He should have been harder on Brian, more strict. <laughs> I don't think she would do that. I think maybe just say nothing. So our family started drifting apart. Eventually my company grew much too large for this little town, and we moved on. Not long after that, your grandfather ended up in that wheelchair. That marked the end of our friendship, for obvious reasons. Okay. What about this? Do you recognize the call sign I'm thinking it's him. Would be strange if I didn't, since I was the one who coined it. It belongs to a fellow mm. named Jimmy Cochran. He was a coward, really. The nickname is somewhat of a bad joke. Perfect. Thanks. Jimmy Cochran. So, what do you know about Lily Myers? You bought a number of paintings by Lily Myers. Why? I'm known to dabble in art from time to time. Martha, my wife at the time, was enamored with the paintings. I believe she first saw them at the high school which the Myers girl attended. Anyway, after the poor girl killed herself, I bought the painting speculatively. When a young artist with any talent to speak of commits suicide, it can be a wet dream of certain connoisseurs. Shortly after procuring the art, I had it valued by an expert who determined that the value was three times the amount I bought it for. Today, I'm sure I would have made my money back tenfold or more if it wasn't for the art theft. Shit. What art theft? There was a burglary at the mansion I used to own here in town. It was all over the local news at the time. Well, shit. Eloquently put. <laughs> Can you tell me about the art theft? Well, somebody broke in, stole the paintings, and got out. Fairly clumsy job. Lots of broken windows. The strangest thing was, was that I had a Monet, a Rembrandt, and two paintings by Picasso, untouched. But every single painting by an unknown local artist, yeah. gone. There's something that in those paintings. That can't be a coincidence. Agreed. Somebody wanted those paintings badly. I assume there was an investigation. Yes, Sheriff Truman came by with his deputy a few hours later, but they didn't have much luck. They found a few hairs, which turned out to be from Raffles, the family Ruffles. dog. Some <laughs> stunning police work right there. Indeed. Ruffles. There was a single witness, though, who said he could make out multiple burglars leaving the scene of the crime, but nothing more than that. So, I take it the case was closed? Yes. I honestly didn't care much one way or the other, given the fact that my most expensive pieces were safe and sound. I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff about the matter, if that's okay with you. Certainly. I'll call ahead and instruct him to give you everything. Yes, and in with the sheriff. That'd be great. Thanks, Charles. Anytime. But I'm curious. What's your interest in the paintings? I've learned that my grandfather went to Sue and asked to see them right before he had his injury. 
Is that so? Strange. It is strange. Uh, yeah, I probably should ask him more about Jimmy Cochran. Tell me about Jimmy Cochran. Is he still alive? In a literal sense. He's been held in a mental institution for years. Let me guess, since 81? Either 82 or 83. I'm fairly certain it was early. Huh. Do you remember the name of the institution? Something starting with an E. Uh, Emerson, Everton, or similar. Ingstrom? Ingstrom Psychiatric Hospital? Yes, that's the one. You know the place, Kathy. Mm, I think we should tell him the truth. He's been very forthcoming. I do. My mother is in there. Sharon Evans? I had her committed about a year ago. I see. It must have taken a lot of courage to do that, Kathy. Mothers have a lot of power over us. More than most of us care to admit. I guess so. Do you know why Jimmy ended up in there? Some obsessive compulsive syndrome. He became fixated with circles and started circles. hurting himself, trying to scratch the circles out of his head. Creepy. I wonder what set him off. I think I'll check the place out tomorrow. Too late to head back to the city now. Circles like like these orbs? What can you tell me about the Church of the Holy Trinity? They seem like any other church to me. But then again, I'm not their usual clientele. Weddings, baptisms, and funerals are just about what I can muster. And I always leave early. Okay. Thanks, Charles. That's all I need for now. You're welcome, Kathy. Come back anytime. Okay. Just some boring landscape paintings. Looks like Wade brought some of his old tombs with him. That guy is huge. I wonder how many cows he eats per day. I'd rather not. He crushed me like a twig. <laughs> All right. Let's head out then. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, I did realize I really should be like if I'm gonna drink a cocktail and have it be thematically appropriate, I should give you a recipe, huh? <laughs> um, I'll try and do that next time. Especially if it's good. I need to taste it first and make sure it's actually a good cocktail, but we'll give you the recipes. No more just like potion mixing and whatever. <laughs> I'll give you exact measurements next time, I promise. Okay, uh, let's head out. So there's a couple things we can do now. Um, we still have the church to check out. We still have the nature reserve to check out. Um, but I also want to call the Air Force Base and ask them about Johnny Cochran. Jimmy Cochran? Johnny, I don't remember. We need to talk to the sheriff. Uh, and I could probably go back and ask her some more questions too. So I think, what should we do first? Okay, let's go back to grandma's house and call the Air Force Base and ask about Jimmy. Jimmy? Ask about cocky. <laughs> I wonder if mom or grandma knows about him as well. Okay, let's call the Air Force Base. McConnell Air Force Base, how can I help you? Hi, I was just wondering if you had time to answer a few questions. Sure thing, ma'am. Ask away. God, the music in this game is so good. Do you know anything about a pilot named Jimmy Cochran? He was assigned to your base during World War II. Maybe even longer? Hold on, let me check. Yes, Jimmy Cochran, fighter pilot born 1922, tour of duty in Japan from 41 to 42, honorably discharged for health reasons. Spent some time as a civilian pilot elsewhere in the U.S. until he returned to the flight academy here in the capacity of a teacher. Mr. Cochran was the major proponent of opening up the academy to civilian students. He 
continued teaching at this base until a sudden resignation in 1983 for unspecified reasons. All right, thanks. Okay. All right, that's all. Goodbye, ma'am. I wonder if I can call up uh, Everton. No result for that. Well, yeah, but... Okay. Okay. I don't know if we're going to be able to get in touch with Jimmy. Oh, hello, dear. Glad to see you again so soon. Hi, Grandma. I just thought I'd drop by. Sure, hon. Stay as long as you'd like. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? Do you know who Jimmy Cochran is? He was a friend of Grandpa's. I believe he teaches at the flight school these days. I don't think so, at least not anymore. I was told he was placed in a mental facility. Really? He always struck me as a kind man. Maybe a bit nervous and on edge, but not crazy. There's more. I found out that Jimmy asked Grandpa for help not long before Grandpa ended up in that wheelchair. Jimmy sounded really desperate. I'm sure what happened to Grandpa that night had something to do with his cry for help. You should go find the man then. Surely he must know something. That's the plan. I just wondered if there's anything else you think I should know about him. Not really. We haven't stayed in touch since Joseph was injured. I know that he had a wife, Agatha, and a son, James. Agatha passed away from cancer years ago, but as far as I know, James still lives in the city with his family. So can I look him up? Okay, thanks, Grandma. Yes. Or actually, no, it didn't show up. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Okay, but... Well, yeah. gotta go, Graham. She's Talk to you later. Any of that. Bye, Kathy. How do I get hold of Jimmy Cochran or his son? looking him up and okay well for now we can go ask the sheriff about the stolen art Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? If you must. I mean, does he know about him? Do you know who Jimmy Cochran is? Nope. So helpful, thank you. I don't need to ask him that. Uh -huh. Do you know anything about the art theft in the Wade estate? Um, yes. Mr. Wade phoned ahead about that. Lenny! Yes, boss? Get the report from the burglary in the Wade Estate back in 86? On it, boss. There you go, Kathy. Thanks, buddy. Okay. So let's see. March 11th, 86, 1, 12 a.m. The alarm in the Wade Estate is triggered. The house is empty at the time and the neighbors contact law enforcement. Uh, 2.04 a.m. Officers arrive at the scene. Several broken windows can be observed. A sweep of the estate and surrounding premises reveals no trace of the perpetrators. Uh, 2.20 a.m. A single witness identified as Franklin Goldfarb reports seeing multiple... Wait a second. Frankie Gold? Goober? <laughs> Is that Goober? Is Frankie... Okay, reports seeing multiple burglars leaving the scene of the crime. Uh, 12.15 a.m. Uh, oh, a month later. Charles Wade arrives in Cornwall Springs to make an official statement. After examining the house, he reports that paintings with an excess value of $15,000 have been stolen. Uh, and then on the 26th at 2 p.m., the art in question has not bit yet popped up in any circles that are known to deal with stolen goods, terminating investigation due to lack of leads. Uh, yeah, we need to go talk to fucking I gotta find Goober. this old farb guy. Maybe he knows more about the burglary. I 
I think that's him. He did say it like Frankie Golden or something, right? Uh, oh god, where is he though? Wait, he's not back in jail, is he? I don't have anything else to- Shit. Kathy, you really fucked him over, huh? <laughs> Alright. Can I help us? It's my mother's birthday this weekend. You'll have to get on. Hmm, he's not here. Shit, okay. Uh I wonder, can I ask Lenny about it? Hey Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Does the name Franklin Goldfarb mean anything to you? Sounds familiar, but I can't place him. It totally is him. Yeah, it totally well, is him. Well, gotta go. See ya. Okay, well, he's not here for now, so I guess... We will find him again later. Um... For now, let's, uh, let's go to the church. Ugh. Wow, it's awful churchy in here, huh? Hello, Father. Greetings, my child. I'm glad you decided to come here. Yeah, but just so you know, I'm not here to join your church or anything. Oh, I would never assume that. Good. So, with that out of the way, I have some questions. Anything you need. I'm Isaac Price. Kathy. Kathy Rain, but I'm guessing you figured that out already. I did. Rumors spread quickly around here. So, how can I be of service? Okay, let's ask him about the church first. Care to tell me the history of the church? I'd be happy to. The story is a fascinating one. This church was founded by my father, William T. Price, in the 70s. Back then, he made his living as a traveling salesman and was driving through this area, as he'd done so many times before. However, this day was different. My father held dark thoughts in his mind. He was angry thinking of evil deeds, even considering swerving off the road into a rock and ending it all. Then suddenly, divine intervention. Three bright lights appeared. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, mm. the sign of God. This epiphany was Circles. the moment my father had been waiting for. He sold all of his belongings and took me and my brother to live with him here in Conwell Springs. Soon thereafter, he built this church and started gathering followers. They began to refer to him as Father Bill. This is super culty. I take it that window up there resembles what he saw when he had this epiphany? Indeed. The stained glass window depicts the Holy Trinity as witnessed by my father. Do you know exactly when or where this event took place? Why do you ask? Oh, just curious. It's a captivating story. Well, it was in the spring of 1971, but my father never told anyone where. Okay, so what happened then? People flocked to Father Bill. He started teaching, writing scripture. The church flourished and continued to grow all the way up until his sudden death in 1983. That's when I stepped in to take leadership of the church. I take it that the church started declining after the death of Father Bill? Uh, yes, naturally so. With such a magnetic personality, he was irreplaceable. But I assure you, the church is still very much thriving. <laughs> Looks kind of empty to me. It's not really our peak hours. What's up with you handing out pamphlets at funerals, then? Trying to reel people in at a weak moment? I'm going to assume you meant no disrespect, child. I'm simply providing divine guidance when it's needed the most. Gross. That's culty. Mm. Well, let's see. I could ask him about Lily Myers. Does the name Lily Myers mean anything to you? It does. I was a substitute teacher in her high school for some time before I was ordained. Really? Did you know her personally? We weren't close. I only knew her as much as a teacher would know any student. 
All right, so how did she seem toward the end? For one, she started skipping school a lot. And when she did show up, she was absent-minded and moody. She always looked depressed and hunched down like she had a whole world on her shoulders. Any idea of what caused this change? Not a clue. All I know is that when she returned from that last summer break, she was a whole different person. He probably wouldn't know about this. Do you know anything about an art theft at the Wade Estate in the 80s? I have just a vague memory of reading about it in the paper. Okay. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather in 81? It was the work of the devil, I'll say that much. Joseph was a kind man. He did not deserve such a fate. You heard my speech at the funeral, Kathy. I meant every word. He was a great man who did much good for this community. Did you know him personally? In a way. He and my father did charity work together. Joseph was around a lot when I was young. They collaborated on a few different projects for the homeless and for the troubled youth, among other things. So my grandfather was a member of the church? I wouldn't say that, no. He was a friend of the church, but he wasn't a religious man. He believed only in philanthropy. That being said, Joseph was the person who convinced me to become a priest. Really? Oh yes, I was a teenager back then, full of rebellion, every fiber of my being wanting to distance myself from my father. Joseph made me realize my sinful pride and showed me how I should follow my heart regardless of what others might think. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Hmm. Granddaddy contains multitudes. I mean, he probably doesn't know anything about these guys, but I have to I have to ask because it's an un, unused thing of that mm, I've got a fucking hundred percent it. I just can't help myself. Do you know who Jimmy Cochran is? I don't recognize that name, no. Yeah. Do you know who Franklin Goldfarb is? I'm afraid not, my child. Yeah, that's alright. That's better than her just being like, Psh, why would you even ask you about that, dumb dumb? That's all I need for now, Father. May the Lord shine his light on you. Okay, let's see. What have we got? We've got Bibles. A bunch of red Bibles stacked in neat rows. What does Kathy think about the Bibles? <laughs> She want I one? really shouldn't. They might burn. <laughs> oh, Kathy. Okay, let's see. Um, altar. It's an altar. You know, the place where they put the sacrificed goats, kids, and other crap. <laughs> Impressive window. There's no doubt about it. Those are the smoky lights. Yeah. There's two doors here. I mean... I don't think I can just, like, waltz in there, though, right? It lead to a sacristy or a closet of some kind. You might as well try, though, right? Locked. Okay. Could lead to a sacristy or a... What about this one? <laughs> Is this one open? Locked. Okay. Okay, yeah, so the... Or actually... Is there anything I didn't ask him about? Maybe I should show him the picture. I could, but I think I have more to gain from a subtle strategy. Yeah, okay, you're right, you're I'll right, I'll keep you're it right. to myself for now, until I know more about this church. Good call, Kathy, good call. Just testing you. <laughs> okay, let's go to the nature reserve. Well, there's one of those flowers right there. Well, this is it. This is where the picture was taken. Yeah. I'm not sure what I expected to find here. I need to clear my head. Let's have a nice smoke at the nature reserve. Mmm. What the? We've met before, haven't we? A stream man. Um. I don't think so, Mr. Clean. Unless seeing your face on a bottle of detergent counts. Hey, hey go away. <laughs> Always the joker, aren't you, Kathy? Who are you? How do you know my name? You told me, remember? 
feel strange. Am I dreaming? It's the mending. I will try to facilitate. What? You're not real. I'm lying asleep in my bed right now. Focus, Kathy. Listen to the drowned girl. You mean Lily? What about her? She's the anomaly, the missing refrain, the convergence point of things past and events yet to happen. Dial down the metaphors a notch, would you, Mr. Kafka? I get enough of that shit in English class. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't disappoint. I'm glad, given how much trouble I went through to be here. You see, my name was taken from me, so I claimed a color in its stead. The next time we meet, you'll know the exact hue of red. You're on the right Stop path. Stop speaking Kathy. in rhyme. Follow your grandfather, and everything will work out in the end. What? Um. Wait, what? How did I get here? Am I going crazy? Am I turning into mom? Uh oh. Uh oh. What? Okay, now the red horse seems way more sinister. <laughs> Cute red horse. It's some old Swedish thing, I think. Mm, I don't trust it. Okay, well that was really creepy. Um, okay. Grandma, help! <laughs> oh, hello, dear. Okay, well, that was weird. Uh, I think we'll end it here after that really weird thing that just happened. I don't know what that was about. Uh, next time, I guess, we'll find out and uh, follow up on, on Jimmy Cochran and the art theft. See if we can find Goober again. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hope you have a good evening, night, day, whatever time it is for you. And uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you did, bye!